and Marg uh, Wilborn. I'm Jack. I'm the president-elect of Canadian Association of Nurses for the Environment, and I also teach nursing at Université de Saint-Manifest. Just a note that this webinar will be recorded. Um, you're welcome to put your questions in the chat, and we'll address them at the end. Um, and as we continue and start, I would like you to put your name and where you are calling from in the chat box um, as we begin as well. So to start, I wanted to kind of give you an idea of what the Canadian Association of Nurses for the Environment is. So CANE represents nurses dedicated to the improvement of environmental health across all domains of nursing practice, policy, research, and education. Uh, we're also a member of the Canadian Network of Nursing Specialties of the Canadian Nurses Association, which includes practical nurses, registered nurses, and licensed practical nurses, or equivalent, psychiatric nurses, and nurse practitioners. And we also collaborate with other uh, like-minded organizations such as Canadian Coalition of Green Healthcare, CAPE, and also partner in activities and calls to action from different organizations allied with our goals and mission. Um, we're going to be also sending out announcements soon in regards to the nurses drawdown. Um, the uh, we'd also, I would like to acknowledge that I am grateful for living on the lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Dakota, Dene, Métis, and Oji Cree nations. And as um, Kane or Aie'er, uh, we commit to righting the wrongs of colonialism by strengthening our knowledge of and relationships with Indigenous people where we live and work, and by adopting decolonial, decolonial, I am totally French when I say that, I apologize guys and anti-racist practice and discourse. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our speakers for the day. So Bonnie Hamilton Bogart is a retired uh, nurse and children's environmental health advocate. Since the late nineties, Bonnie's time has been spent focusing on the issues of children's health development, healthy development and the environmental challenges they face, challenges that did not exist prior to the mid 20th century. As Bonnie says, the Anthropocene has brought with it a level of toxicity and instability of climate that must be addressed. So our current focus is on the importance of introducing laws that can help reduce our children's exposures to toxins and the effects of climate crisis. Marg Wilburn is a retired public health nurse, feminist, climate crisis activist, and social justice advocate. She has been involved in nature and protecting the environment ever since childhood. Mark grew up in the suburbs of Toronto, but spent summers at the cottage and at summer camps where the motto was take only pictures, leave only footprints, and to take it further, leave the campsite better than you found it. Something that is also true about our planet. Marg loves nature and walks to protect it for her children, wants to protect it for her children and grandchildren and beyond. She's a member of the Climate Reality Canada and a member of the New Brunswick Environmental Nurses Group since the beginning. Um, one of the other things I want to mention before we, before I'll hand it over to Marg and Bonnie is, um, so just for um, purposes, we're gonna put the questions in the chat and we'll answer them at the end. So Marg and Bonnie, feel free to take over now. Thank you. Sorry right. guys. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we will get started and Bonnie and I are very excited to be here today. And um, before we get into our presentation, I just want to mention that we are speaking today from the unceded traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq, Willistawig and Passamaquoddy peoples. This is stolen land to put it bluntly. Um, unceded to me is a very pretty way of saying something that is not very nice. So I like to say stolen land. Um, I'm really ashamed of what our ancestors have done and I'm extremely, extremely emotional right now and so is Bonnie about the findings of those poor little children in the unmarked graves. Uh, we are deeply saddened, to put it mildly, we're horrified by the atrocities that these little children went through with the planned genocide of the governments, the churches and the RCMP and if we are feeling this badly, I can only imagine the hurt that the First Nations people are going through. So we're just very much, that's very much close to our heart right now with everything that's going on. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, 
And before we get started, I just want to mention that Bonnie and I are, are going to be speaking about a Made in New Brunswick um, proposed Bill of Rights, but it can be adapted to your province or territory. We're happy to share it. We want you to share it. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that as we go through, but just want people to know that we are open to sharing and um, really would like you to, and we'll find out, we'll talk a little bit more about supporters and other things afterwards. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Ella Kissy Debra is the first person in the world to have air pollution listed as a cause of death on her death certificate. She was nine years old when she died in London, UK in February of 2013. Her death was due to asthma contributed to by exposure to excessive air pollution, stated the coroner in a landmark ruling announced on December 16th, 2020. Now, I did not know about her death in 2013. And when I found out about this in December 2020, once again, horrified, really sad, and just, I wanna send something to her mom and I haven't been able to do that yet. So anyway, according to the World Health Organization, air pollution kills an estimated 7 million people worldwide every year. These deaths are tragic because they are preventable and they should have been avoided through healthier environments. So they never should have happened. So our environmental, our environmental rights caucus dedicates this presentation to Ella Kissy Deborah's memory. And I will pass it on to Bonnie. Um, okay, Marg, I just need to ask if you've got the uh, screen sharing on at the for the presenter view because I can't see the notes. <laughs> oh, I didn't because wouldn't you wouldn't you see it? Wouldn't everybody see it if I did it that way? Um, well, I we were yes, going, yes, they would. Well, okay, they uh, would. I'm sorry, but I I, I oh, just uh, I'll have to get out of this then, and I'll have to just go over to my uh, PowerPoint. So please excuse me, and um, I have my PowerPoint up here, and I can look at it. Okay, we're good to go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, slide two, we're going to talk about uh, what is this issue that we are talking about today. And it is certainly something that is uh, sort of the quintessential example of how everything is connected. Uh, we can't talk about children's health without talking about the health of the environment here. Um, the words of w WHO, World Health Organization, UNICEF, and the Lancet Commission in 2020 stated that children and the world's populations are suffering and dying from the effects of global environmental disruption, pollution, and climate change. And the ecological damage unleashed today endangers the future of children's lives on our planet, their only home. This is from the World Health Organization, UNICEF and Lancet Commission. So we are saying that as a province, even though we are a small province, 750,000 people, we must act now if we are to protect our ecosystems, lives and future generations. So in a small little province, what can we do that would make the biggest difference? We think that it would be our proposed legislation the New Brunswick Environmental Bill of Rights, an act to protect children, all New Brunswickers, and nature. So an act such as this one, according to David R. Boyd, who is our Canadian uh, representative at the United Nations, he's our special re reporter on human rights and the environment. And in his words, he says that a bit, an act such as this has the potential to become a powerful catalyst for accelerating progress toward a sustainable future. And we believe that this act will set us on a path to a greener, more sustainable province, while also protecting the health and well being of our children for the benefit of future generations of strong, healthy New Brunswickers. Uh, before continuing on, I just would like to. Um, put forward a question for you, the ones who are listening and watching, um, that with this Bill of Rights and with all that you may, may be learning today, 
we're just wondering if you have it within your own context, in your own home place, uh, whether or not there would be ways that you could use this information in your own uh, environment today. So that will be a question we'll pose at the end. Okay, and uh, I guess I'll go on to the next one. Why children? In our preamble of the bill, we, we say scientific research demonstrates that children zero to six and the unborn child are much more vulnerable than adults to environmental harm. This is certainly a science-based uh, statement. Uh, the United Nations Special Reporter, David Boyd, he grouped the types of environmental harm into these categories. And this applies to every person in every country around the world. These, these types of um, environmental harms exist for us now in our world. Air pollution, water pollution, climate change, chemicals, toxic substances and waste, and the loss of biodiversity and access to nature. Um, I just have to say that prior to maybe the mid like 1950s, a lot of this was not in our minds and it was not in our world at that time. The levels of air pollution were not, uh, were not a noticeable thing back then. The levels of water pollution, we could drink out of springs in our, in our provincial parks. Uh, the level of climate change, we had no idea what that was at that point. Chemicals, they only started being produced in, by the thousands and hundreds of thousands in the mid 1940s. That was the beginning of all these, uh, these pollutants entering our environment. Toxic substances and waste, um, Certainly our world has the more people and the more, the more you know, corporate um, bodies that are abusing our environments, these are contributing to toxic substances and waste. And of course, loss of biodiversity for land settlement and land use. So <clears throat> this is all relatively new and we have to remember that it was not always this way. The health of children and their future is intimately linked to the health of the planet. Uh, and the WHO UNICEF Lancet Commission presented their case for placing children at the heart of sustainability and our shared human endeavor. And that is what we would like to do in New Brunswick. And in being that we're in Canada, New Brunswick does have obligations under the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child which recognizes children, that children have rights and freedoms that need to be protected. And certainly the right to a healthy environment while not stated explicitly is there implicitly in the right to the highest attainable level of health. Now, why will we focus on children and why is our bill taking this uh, strong stance on children? First of all, our children will inherit the earth. The, uh, our children are the ones that will have to restore and repair the degraded uh, ecosystems in order that they may have a livable planet for future generations. Uh, children now, currently, we've learned this in the last couple of decades, that they are being born pre-polluted. Studies have found an average of over 200 industrial chemicals in infant cord blood, some of which injure, injure the developing brain. And uh, children are at more at risk, they're more vulnerable because their, their exposures are proportionately far greater than adults. Uh, we all get exposures from the air, water, soil, food, and consumer products. Children have the additional exposure pathways of the placenta and breast milk. And proportionately by body weight, children drink more water, eat more food, breathe more air compared to adults, therefore, they will ingest more contaminants. Children's physiology is less developed to excrete these contaminants. And children tend to be more active and explore their environment orally and play lower to the ground where the contaminants settle. So in New Brunswick, we have special considerations here as we have some industrialized areas with air pollution levels that are 
exceeding allowable levels, resulting in toxic effects to children. Some of these effects could include stunted brain development, reduced lung function, the onset of asthma. And in addition, air pollution can set the stage for problems later in life, such as cancers, chronic respiratory illnesses, cardiovascular diseases, and stroke. Mark? Biodiversity. Biodiversity, the definition is the variety of life, the number and complexity of species either within an ecosystem or on a larger spatial scales, or on larger spatial scales. Biodiversity is essential for robust ecosystem function and when biodiversity declines, ecosystems degrade. The biodiversity crisis plays an important part in climate change. Protection and restoration of biodiversity would not only save nature for future generations, but also help us to tackle climate change and avoid negative consequences on our food, health, and the economy. Children benefit when we protect biodiverse natural systems. The simple reality is that our health depends on nature. So we would like to imagine a world where children have the right to special protection from environmental harm and the right to live and grow in healthy, biodiverse environments. We can make it happen if we start now. Yes, uh, the proposed act, this act was um, in June, 2019, our New Brunswick Environmental Rights Caucus brought together 10 environmental and child youth focused groups to work towards uh, the establishment of this bill, proposed bill. And um, members of the caucus drafted a bill that if enacted, here's what it would do. It would ensure that children and therefore all New Brunswickers and future generations have the right to a healthy environment. It would spell out government's duties to protect New Brunswickers environmental rights. It would ensure that all New Brunswickers have access to the necessary information so that they can participate meaningfully in environmental decision-making. And it would provide mechanisms for New Brunswickers to obtain legal remedies to prevent or redress environmental harm. And next slide, principles. Our guiding principle is primacy of the child for all the reasons that we have already mentioned. And as adults in a world of unprecedented global change and uncertainty, we must accept our duty to protect children and pregnant mothers from environmental harm. The principles that are, have been incorporated into the draft bill include sustainable development, which is development that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Secondly, preserving biodiversity in and among all species. Thirdly, the polluter pay principle, meaning that a polluter must bear the cost of measures to reduce pollution based on either the extent of the damage done to society or the extent to which an acceptable level of pollution is exceeded. Polluters do get away, get, get off with things here fairly easily at this point in time. The precautionary principle is the principle where there, that where there are threats of serious or irreversible damage to the environment, the lack of a full scientific certainty should not be used as a reason for postponing action to protect the environment. Another principle is that of environmental justice, the principle that there should be a just distribution of environmental benefits and burdens among New Brunswickers without discrimination on the basis of any ground prohibited by the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which only makes sense that if there are benefits to be, to be had from improving our environmental performance, then really these benefits should be equally distributed to all. 
And the last uh, principle is that of public trust. And this is probably the most important where the, it, it is the government's responsibility to preserve and protect the collective interest of the people of New Brunswick in the quality of environment for the benefit of present and future generations. So it all boils down to um, legislation which gives government that responsibility and which they will accept for the benefit, for the collective good of all of its citizens. Mark? Okay. We're not very happy with the government right now, and neither is Greta. And we love Greta, and Greta has done so much to get youth involved. It's amazing how much work she's done and how things have really taken off. So as Greta says, our house is on fire. We have to act now. Greta puts us all to shame. We have stolen her future and all the children's futures if we do not act now. And we are running out of time. Our province is in a good position to act now. Uh, first, first off, New Brunswickers are ready to take a stand for the environment. We understand collective responsibility. Over the past decades, New Brunswickers have been staging demonstrations on the grounds of the legislature on a host of environmental issues. And Bonnie and I have certainly been there with our placards. And the crowds are getting larger. And to battle the COVID-19 virus, we all stepped up to say we are all in this together. We want and need to make our world a better place for our children and future generations. Secondly, now is the time to reimagine our province's future and to create a better than normal recovery plan that makes New Brunswick safer, healthier, and more resilient to future pandemics. And the pandemic has certainly highlighted our need to be able to grow more of our own food. It's also highlighted a whole bunch of the gaps in the system which is a really good thing. It's, it's shone the spotlight on all of the issues that we have in regards to social justice, et cetera. We need to be more independent in our food security in New Brunswick, and we need to do it sustainably and with environmental protection. Thirdly, our government has recently actually been using a collaborative all party approach to problem solving in regards to the COVID-19 committee that they've had. There was also an all party standing committee on climate change and environmental stewardship was the first of its kind in Canada, which Bonnie and I will definitely be tapping into. Okay. Now, uh, thinking about human rights and environmental protection. Governments of, a, look, this is more of the big picture uh, of this whole issue. Governments of 156 nations of the United Nations have recognized the right to a healthy environment in legally binding instruments at the national and or international level and some at the state or provincial level. This list does not yet include Canada, which in itself is shocking, but there is hope. Um, this April, the federal government introduced Bill C-28, uh, which is called Strengthening Environmental Protection for a Healthier Canada Act. And if this, this bill becomes law, Canadians will have the right to a healthy environment. And uh, there is support for this whole concept across Canada. There are 174 municipalities who have declared their support for the right to a healthy environment for all Canadians. And in fact, we have five of those municipalities in New Brunswick, Sackville, Bertrand, Beresford, Gagetown, and Trackety. And if you want to find out uh, if you have how many municipalities you have in your province, you can go to um, the Blue Dot website and, uh, ask, and just put in municipal declarations. So um, in terms of research, this, uh, this picture here uh, on this slide, The Right to a Healthy Environment, is one of the many books published by David R. Boyd. <clears throat> and uh, this one zeroes in directly on what it is we're about. And according to his research, he, he listed some of the, ben well, he listed the benefits of recognizing this right, the benefits that occur for the countries who do recognize the right to a healthy environment. One is that you would have stronger environmental performance. For example, you'd have cleaner air, cleaner water, smaller ecological footprints. You'd have uh, stronger environmental laws and policies. 
you would have improved in implementation and enforcement. You'd also have greater citizen participation in environmental decision making. And ultimately, you would have increased accountability of corporations and governments and all polluters. You'd also have a reduction in environmental injustice, such as environmental racism. Mark? Okay, this picture that we have on the slide here is actually a photo of the Irving Refinery in St. John, New Brunswick. They had an explosion in 2018. So this is for those of us that live in New Brunswick, um, Irvings are a bit of an issue. Um, and if anybody is interested, um, I sent it to Fiona, my daughter, Abby Moser. If you Google Abby Moser and the Irvings, she wrote a really good article in 2019 about how they really um, have the upper hand in what they want to do in New Brunswick. They pretty much control a lot of the, a lot of our, our forests, et cetera. So anyway, we have, Bonnie and I have a lot to deal with in regards to getting up against industry. So if you remember Ella from our first slide, uh, she was one of the casualties of society's inadequate regulations around air pollution. And we don't doubt that we have experienced similar tragedies here in New Brunswick. Now, we have new information just recently in February 2021, um, researchers from Harvard in collaboration with researchers um, from three British universities, they studied global mortality caused by pollution from fossil fuels. And they were actually able to target it to, to fossil fuels through some kind of, um, I have no idea, some kind of specific technology to the particles regard, in regards to fossil fuels. So it's amazing. So anyway, the deaths from fossil fuel air emissions are much higher than they previously thought, which they found out through this technology. A total of 8 million people worldwide died in 2018 from fossil fuel related air pollution through their studies. Also, fossil fuel emissions accounted for 18% of total global deaths in 2018, almost one in five deaths. I mean, that is horrific. That is a horrific st statistic. Um, and regions with the highest concentrations of uh, fossil fuel related air pollution, including Eastern North America, have the highest rates of mortality. So we have a quote from uh, Dr. Frederica Pereira, a professor at Columbia University's Mailman School of Public Health and the director of the Columbia Center for Children's Environmental Health. And she stated this in 2016. There's no question that reducing our dependence on fossil fuels would achieve highly significant health and economic benefits for children worldwide, both immediately and well into the future, vastly improving the health and well-being of generations to come. Knowing this, we have a moral imperative to enact child-centered energy and climate, policy, a policy, climate policies that address the full array of physical and psychosocial stressors to which children are subjected due to fossil fuel combustion. So we really have got to get moving on this. Yes. And... Okay, support. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to Kane because you guys have supported our bill, which is huge for us. Um, currently, we have 20 organizations across New Brunswick supporting our proposed Bill of Rights. We aim to gain more support from um, from New Brunswick and from Canadian associations and international groups, corporations, professional associations and individuals. So we also have support from the Canadian Association um, of Physicians for the Environment, uh, Climate Reality Canada, and internationally we have support from the Children Environmental Rights Initiative. So we certainly encourage you, um, we're so happy that you guys are supporting us from the organization, but also if you can sign up for support, um, we will have that link in the chat piece because uh, you can also sign up as, a, as an individual, but also um, any thoughts you have of who else we should go after for support and endorsement would be fantastic. Um, and I'm gonna just show you, and we're gonna talk a little bit about some of our endorsements that we do have. So we, we do have some really good endorsements. One second, I just gotta to go to the next slide. And Bonnie's going to address about Edith. Okay. 
Yes, Edith Doucette is um, a retired member of our civil service here. In fact, she was the top civil servant being the clerk of the executive council office to the premier. And, uh, but before all of that, she began as a kindergarten teacher and has always been a passionate proponent of early childhood development. So um, yes, she, uh, she said that early childhood professionals have known instinctively about the benefits of getting children out in nature and the relationship between time in nature and happier children. We need to preserve these wild spaces in all their biodiversity. We need to make science-based decisions that keep all New Brunswickers safe and healthy. All children have a right to a healthy environment, should be able to live their lives free from the effects of harmful chemicals and pollutants and be protected from environmental and health risks. And uh, for the benefit of present and future generations, we need to ensure that our children and grandchildren will have clean air, clean water, safe and healthy food, safe consumer products, and a stable climate in which to live, play, grow, and become resilient to future challenges. I strongly urge government to pass the Bill of Environmental Rights and Act to Protect Children, All New Brunswickers, and Nature. And for that, we sincerely thank Edith Doucette. And she has been very happy to have her endorsements spread far and wide. Okay, next over to you, Mark. Okay, another fabulous endorsement is Dr. Philip Landrigan, who we love. Um, he also has a connection to um, the East Coast because his grandfather was actually uh, lived in Nova Scotia and moved to Boston. So Dr. Philip Landrigan kind of, uh, he likes the East Coast and he still visits Nova Scotia, which is kind of, it makes, it's, he's even, we love him and it just makes him even more dear to our heart because of that. So he um, is a phenomenal pediatrician, a public health physician, an epidemiologist, and certainly our champion. And if you're not aware of him, he's written numerous books. Uh, he's still working. And some of his initial work was um, his landmark studies in regards to lead. And it was a particular smelter that he was dealing with, I think in El Paso, Texas. And they did studies on the children very close to the smelter and then farther away, they did, they did blood tests about lead. And he was very much involved with that. And then he got into um, getting lead out of gasoline and lead out of paint. And he was, he was huge with that. So I'm just gonna read part of, of his endorsement. Um, passage of this child-focused Bill of Environmental Rights is the right moral and ethical thing to do. And that's what we really want to impress upon our, our government, be on the right side of history. Passage of this bill will be good for New Brunswick and good for Canada because it will give the province and the nation a generation of strong, healthy, intelligent, and economically productive adults who will lead New Brunswick through the 21st century. So um, we just are so happy with that endorsement because that's that's huge. He's, he's a superstar, rock star. He is, he's a rock star. And speaking of stars, <laughs> there's uh, Rafi. We, uh, we got an endorsement from Rafi. He's been with us on this for a long time. Uh, he's been doing this, been supporting this uh, for us for a long, long time. Uh, but anyhow, he, his quick little endorsement says that the New Brunswick Bill of Environmental Rights and Act to Protect Children, All New Brunswickers in Nature sets an important precedent to be imitated everywhere. When our children's environmental health is honored and protected by law, we can reap the rewards of a safe and healthy world. Couldn't be much more succinct than that. So thank you, Rafi, for that. And over to you, Marg. Okay. Our call to action. As New Brunswickers and Canadians, we must ask ourselves, what legacy are we leaving for our children? The next steps that we have um, is we want to achieve a truly sustainable province. We must, sorry, to achieve a truly sustainable province, we must undertake strong actions that support the health of New Brunswick's children, all citizens and ecosystems. So these are our wants. Number one, we want our government to address environmental health challenges in our children and all our citizens. 
mitigate the climate crisis. We've got flooding, extreme weather events, drought. Right now we're in a heat wave. Tackle the driving forces of environmental change, resource use, population, and technology. All of these which would, would enhance the integrity of the natural systems on which our population and all humanity ultimately depends. Secondly, we want our government to create an all party committee to work on this bill and include representative community stakeholders, children and youth, environmental non-government organizations and indigenous communities. We want our government to add representatives of the Department of Health, including public health, and the Office of the Child and Youth Advocate to the Standing Committee on Climate Change and Environmental Stewardship. And we would also like to ask um, the Standing Committee on Climate Change and Environmental Stewardship to develop an analysis of the impacts of such a bill on the work of government and make appropriate recommendations. And this would include asking all relevant departments what difference such a bill would make to the achievement of their mandate. I'm not gonna get into all the departments because it is all of the departments every single department has an effect on the environment, whether it's positive or negative. And in the words of David Suzuki, we are not a special interest group. Climate change affects everybody and every department and every living thing on the planet. So um, we want our government to act this bill ASAP. And there is um, in the chat, there should be a link for support. We can all make a difference and we must be like the Lorax. We have to speak for the trees, but we're also speaking for the children. So I'm gonna pass it over to Bonnie. She's got a question for the audience and then we can get into some discussion. Thank you. Okay. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of our presentation, our question would basically be, um, is there some context within your own world at this point in time where you feel that this information could be used effectively? So I will just leave, throw that out and anyone can come back with a thought or two on that one as you wish. Now, if there are other participants to, um, who would like to just throw in their own questions for us, we're willing to field those as well. Thank you, Bonnie and Mark. That was really, it's really fantastic, uh, the work that you've, uh, you've done on this bill and all that you've managed to achieve uh, so far. So I just, I had a couple of um, questions maybe um, about other people or other groups uh, possible endorsements as well too if, if I can ask that question um, and one was um, the Canadian Partnership on Children's Health and the Environment um, uh, as an endorser and uh, other other physician um, such as uh, Bruce uh, Lamphere, Dr. Bruce uh, Lamphere from British uh, Columbia who's yes. done some really great work as well too, and, and done some really great little videos as well too about children's exposure to toxicants, including lead. Um, and then also I was thinking of uh, Irene Nabuka, who's from the, um, the Pediatric Environmental Health uh, Unit in Edmonton um, as well too. And then one more thing I was wondering as well, whether you have the support of the Nursing Association um, or, uh, a college in New Brunswick. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's an association or a college that you have in New Brunswick, but do you have an endorsement from the nursing organization there? We're actually working on uh, the one for the New Brunswick Nurses Union. Um, I was just in, in talks with them last week, so they're gonna put that up as a proposal. Um, the association, we haven't gone to them yet, eh, Bonnie? Uh, no. They're kind of on our list. Um, yes, New Brunswick Nursing Association is what it's called. Yes, and Bruce Lanfear is obviously uh, one of our Canadian heroes too. Uh, I would I would urge all of the viewers to look up Bruce Lanfear's um, YouTube on children's environmental health and uh, lead and heavy metals. And he's one that we thought of too, Fiona. We just haven't gone to him yet. 
but yeah, because we love that video. That's such a good, I mean, he's done a ton of work. Um, he's worked a lot with, uh, with Phil Landrigan as well. Yes, so we can certainly connect with him. Who was the other person you said from Edmonton? It was uh, Irina Buka. She's a pediatrician and she is, um, she works or has been working till recently. I haven't been in touch with her lately at the, the Pediatric Environmental Health Unit in Edmonton. It's the only PSU in, in Canada and uh, out of the Misericordia Hospital in Edmonton. So she's done uh, a lot of great work as well too on uh, environmental health and uh, children, certainly. Yeah, so that could be anywhere. We can, I can give you them the information about that after the, the webinar, if you like. Okay, well, that would be great. Okay. Uh, and maybe I have another question is that what, what, um, what are the, the next steps for this bill at the moment? Like what, um, how is the, in terms of the passage of the bill or in terms of the reading of the bill, maybe you can just explain a little bit more about that. Um, I don't mind taking that one, Marg. Um, Yes, our next step is to find a sponsor within government to bring this bill forward. And uh, our, the advice we've been getting recently is to perhaps approach the liberals because they are the second, they are the opposition and, uh, and, and try to bring them on board as sponsoring this bill. And also if we do that and we do have an active Green Party caucus here. There are three Green members in New Brunswick, which is so great. So if they, you know, put, throw in their votes with the Liberals, uh, we might be able, and if we got a, the occasional, maybe we get an occasional uh, renegade from the PC party, I don't know. But uh, we're just thinking now would be a good time to to try try doing it that way. And that's certainly the next step. But what we want to um, do even in advance of that is to get this uh, presentation out to as many uh, MLAs and cabinet ministers as possible. And, and then <clears throat> in doing so, hopefully that would uh, find us the sponsor that we're looking for. Certainly we'll be approaching uh, the leader of the opposition first. Yeah, and we actually, we did our launch on June 2nd and Bonnie and I wanted us to have a meeting right away with, with our caucus, our New Brunswick Environmental Rights Caucus. And of course we're not meeting till tomorrow. So um, we will have more discussion tomorrow as to, as to next steps. But um, yeah, we really wanna, we really wanna push it. Um, the other part is with the federal bill. Um, Bonnie and I would like to actually share the bill with um, the Minister of Environment and Climate Change federally, because we've read, you know, we've read sort of what they have, but they need a lot. There's a lot more work that needs to be done there, especially in regards to uh, the vulnerability of children. So we are going to see if we can meet up with them federally as well, and see if we can help them with the federal piece. And we're still going to keep working on the New Brunswick part, but of course, ideally we would love to have the right to a healthy environment as a Canadian, but we've been working it in New Brunswick because I mean, nobody has the right in Canada really to a healthy environment. So we're kind of working on both issues. So we're gonna see what we can do federally, but we'll continue to work on the New Brunswick side because we don't know what's gonna happen federally with an election, who knows, things are slow, right? So we wanna, we wanna keep the momentum up since we just did the launch June 2nd. So we just, we want to keep things moving. So. Oh, there's a hand up, I see. Oh, Heather. Heather? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I was going to try and put my video on, but I'm not quite sure here. Uh, anyways, um, it's my first time to uh, join this um, group. So I, um, I feel like a newbie, but anyways, uh, I'm excited to see what uh, is being proposed. I like all your ideas, and I think, uh, I just wonder where you're bringing in maybe the Indigenous uh, connection to the environment, because they are uh, one of our 
biggest protectors of the environment. And I think there's so many environmental issues for indigenous across our country. I can't speak for New Brunswick specifically because I live in Ontario, but I know that, you know, just the clean water itself and the impacts on uh, the youth, particularly in uh, reserves across our country is um, got attention, but I hate to say it, there's not much action. So let's hope that uh, your ideas and your pushing and encouraging will also maybe uh, facilitate some action. Um, and I think if you can have that partnership, and I wouldn't rule out NDP, again, I'm not familiar with your politics in New Brunswick, but I know that um, the New Democratic uh, leader is um, open to uh, taking on new ideas and hopefully moving them through, um, you know, his party as well as uh, impacting Canada. So, good points, excellent points. And uh, you, you, um, I think what you've done is you kind of put a little spotlight on where we can make our presentation even stronger because, you know, as you as you probably know from our introduction, the Indigenous people are not very far from our minds and hearts right now, and. And if we can incorporate that more strongly into our, our presentation, that would be fantastic. And I would certainly wanna do that. Uh, but as well, we need to reach out and bring in some indigenous voices so that they can help us make this something that would work for them as well. And there's the Indigenous Nursing uh, Association. I don't know if they still, go, I, I don't know if it's SENA or exactly the acronym they're using, but that might be someone that would be worthy of partnering with. Um, or and also, I wouldn't rule out um, your schools of nursing and students because you have a lot of youth and I think they can bring some energy and some youth voices to, to this and maybe uh, some support letters coming from the um, Students Nursing Association in your province would also uh, provide you with, um, you know, the, the youth perspective that uh, you probably have captured somewhere, but um, you know, it wouldn't hurt to reach out. For sure. And that has been uh, an issue for us all along. It's been, it's been hard to draw in the youth. Uh, we've been trying to, to do that. And there are a couple of youth that are interested, but it seems like they are always a little bit busy <laughs> with yeah. things when we, when we meet them. But yeah, no, no, you're, you're absolutely right on. Absolutely. Yeah, and so maybe to get some of those youth, I don't know, do you have... Um... Um, like groups like Girl Guides, Brownies, Boy Scouts, um, do you have 4-H clubs? Those might be good places to get the youth involved. There may be um, also some of their activities are environmentally focused. So maybe yeah. they would be interested in, uh, you know, maybe taking on uh, moving through their own uh, associations, something around the environment. I know 4-H is very big into that here in Ontario. So, And we have a very big 4-H uh, force down here as well in New Brunswick. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we are connected with children and youth. When we did our launch, we had, uh, like we have some videos of students supporting us. We just didn't show those today. So, I mean, they're definitely involved, but like Bonnie said, uh, it's very hard to get them. Um, they're very busy. <laughs> do, do, you, do the youth have to uh, put in so many service hours? Like I, I know in Ontario, they have to do, do in their high school 40 service community hours. And I don't know if you have that same criteria in New Brunswick. I don't know. Because yeah, if you we, do, then we, if you tap do. into you do, well, maybe there will be some youth that would say, hey, I'm going to do my hours on environment and I'm going to do my 40 hours uh, working with um, either of you or both of you or your association. So, mm -hmm. yep, they, they do have to do hours. I think in middle school and I think in the high school, we can look at the um, look at the curriculum again for that. Um, I used to be I used to work in the schools. Um, so, yeah, I used to be totally connected. But when you're retired, it's a little bit different. Um, and Barney and I, we're doing all of this. This is all volunteer. Um, we're not getting paid for any of this. So even when we did our launch, we all gave money. 
um, so we could have the translation in French. So um, yeah, like we, we need more people to help us. For sure. Yeah, and, and again, like I understand that youth are busy, but um, I think with the COVID, they're looking for special projects, particularly in nursing programs. And they're thinking, how can they get their community hours in for placements if they can't go into the placement because of COVID? So maybe there would be, a, you know, a opportunity to develop some kind of, um, again, hours connected to commitment to you to do the political end of things or to knock on doors or whatever. So wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, those are really good suggestions, Heather. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. And thank you for what you're doing because it's it's not just going to be impacting New Brunswick. I'm hoping it will uh, spill over and uh, also influence the rest of Canada. And you're absolutely right. If we have if we don't have a good environment, we have nothing. And I think it's so so important. And we have to we have to not lose sight of that. Right on, absolutely. You just can't uh, take children out of the environment or the environment out of children. Yes. Yes, and, and, and we're talking environment uh, in so many uh, environment is, it, it can be uh, defined in so many ways, but I think, uh, you know, if you don't have a healthy environment for us to breathe and live in, um, all these other things are, are secondary. It's true, and do you, feel exactly. that, do you feel that maybe people are looking around themselves and seeing all this uh, pollution and climate instability and so forth and saying, well, this is the norm and people are getting more adapted to it or something. I think you're right. I think there is some of that. And, um, and I think it's, it's just a different world. Um, you know, I'm in the same age group as, as uh, I'm assuming I just retired. So, you know, I just think that we've lost something of that what you said you know we used to drink from the springs I used to do that myself when you said that I just brought flashbacks and I thought I, I wouldn't feel secure or safe to do that any longer and we've lost so much and maybe those are the kind of stories that need to be captured somehow mm -hmm. and um, you know uh, that's the kind of impact you know that we need to to make um, that that could be a whole uh little series of 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 little like books <laughs> children's books <laughs> i was sure and i was thinking those uh canada minutes or whatever they have on tv those little yes <laughs> yeah yes yeah what we've lost over the years i mean people don't i remember because uh probably the most uh effective little strategy that I used in one of our meetings, Marg, I forget if you were there or not at this particular meeting, but we went to meet with the Minister of Health and we took in all our pictures. Yes, I do believe you were there. And remember I had this little tiny photograph. It was of uh, the Minister of Health's uh, former, like it was his homestead. But oh my, yes, I remember that. My, yes. uncle, my uncle had bought it up in Woodstock in a very rural area. And it was these beautiful trees overhanging in there. There was a little girl, which was me at the age of four, and it was black and white. And I said, you know, look, do you recognize this, uh, Mr. Minister? Well, yes. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he's, it made the point that all this stuff happened after that point. Like the things that began to really damage our earth in, in every way, uh, they, they really gathered momentum around the mid-century last century so i just wanted to make that point and but it's something that we shouldn't lose sight of and especially those of us who are older yes so it's i'm i'm proud of being old for that reason and <laughs> old <laughs> and uh, i i want to be able to uh share stories with younger people to remind them of what we've lost i think it's a really important thing if we can get this project off the ground, get somebody handling the bill for us, maybe that'll be our next big one, right, Mark? Yes, and I mean, we've got all these great ideas of what we'd like to do. We'd like to have numerous videos. We do have, we did put out a video call for the launch and that young girl, Amelia, who wrote a letter to, to uh, Justin Trudeau, every, she wrote a letter every week to, uh, 
the Prime Minister about her various concerns about the environment. And so she did do a little video for us about it. Um, and we wanted her at the launch, but I mean, she was in school and she wasn't able to come. So um, yeah, we, we want to tap into more of the Indigenous and, and to the youth and, and to the children. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot more we can build on. You know, there's, a, there's so much work to be done, like just so much. But it feels good to be at this point because we have our ducks in a row at this point. We and do. It feels as if, okay, now we're ready. We can branch out in this way, reach out to the Indigenous community, reach out to the youth and do all these various initiatives. But certainly we could use a little help. <laughs> Is there any support from industry in New Brunswick on this issue? Oh, any support? From industry? Uh, I don't think so, not yet. We have a, a couple of little businesses that potentially are, one, well, we have one business, a uh, little upstart, what do they call them? Um, startups <laughs> that has wanted to support our work, but we, we don't have any real industry support. You're absolutely right on. And that's one of the things, Dad, actually, that. Um... That's my dad on the call. Thank you so much for watching. And, and he is so smart and has lots to tell, many stories. Um, but yeah, David Boyd suggested that as well, that we need to reach out to industry. And that's what that's on our list of things to do. Um, so we're gonna do that to try to get um, support from industry. I really feel we're up against the Irvings and they're the first people that are gonna wanna say no to our bill and that's, very much the politicians do whatever Irving says. So we've we've got to fight for sure. We're like David and Goliath in regards to that, but we're not gonna stop. We're gonna keep going. And every time there's a barrier, we go over it, under it, through it, whatever to get there. So that's what I've done my whole life in government. And now that's what I'm doing outside of government, but at least we're not gagged anymore. Now we are allowed to speak because I was not allowed to speak within government about climate change or anything, Bonnie's the same. And that's probably why Edith Doucet is able to support us now because she wouldn't have been able to because as a civil servant, you are not allowed to speak out, right? right. Mm -hmm. So we have we are speaking out for all those years we weren't able to. <laughs> it's lovely to hear your comments too. I see Heather has her hand up again. I or, probably didn't take it down, but uh, oh. I, went, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize I had to take my hand down, but I will do that in a second. <laughs> um, but just to follow up and, and uh, how lovely for you to have your dad on, uh, Mark, that's wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to say, yeah, when you start looking for uh, sponsors or someone to pay, I guess we have to, I just keep thinking of the roads we went down with smoking you know like 30 years ago 40 years ago when we started and we were up against big pharmacies you know because they were selling the tobacco products and you know and it was everybody it was the thing to do it was just uh, they became immune to it sort of thing and it took a long time so I don't mean to discourage you but just to you know uh, be careful who you get in bed with I guess is the saying and then you know maybe some company that's uh, like a water manufacturer or something like you know that wants to be sure that we'll have clean water but then will that minimize their sales if you but we'll never drink the water again from the streams so we will always need to have bottled water probably so that that's just what came to my mind and i uh, i do appreciate that those are all sensitive things to think about yeah and i'll see if i can figure out how to take my hand down. yeah <laughs> there it is uh, um this is uh, so this is Fiona. I think now we're we're pretty well at time. Um, and so maybe we'll wrap it up here. Um, and so I guess I just really want to thank you both for this really inspirational uh, webinar and the incredible efforts uh, that you put in to, to bringing this to the point where it is now uh, as well. And uh, yeah, being determined <laughs> and persistent. Um, because yes, like like you have said, it's this is the right thing to do, um, and uh, so I really do hope that you get uh, more endorsements as well. And I just I guess I had a, a question: if people wanted to contact you, is it best to do it through the link? Because I did put the link in um, that you'd said about supporting the bill, 
but I, I think on your webinar, I'm not sure that you gave your contact information. Oh, we should um, have our emails on there, don't you think, Marg? Yes, I can. I can just put it in the chat right now. Okay. Okay. That might be a good way because it there there might well be people who who might have other ideas as well too, uh, or who would like to uh, to be able to help you with uh, moving this forward. That's great, Mark. Thank you. Do you have mine? So yeah. I'm so just yeah, maybe. Okay. I'm looking for yours, so I put it in right. B o n n i e l h b. Sorry, I'm slow. I, I just have to say thank you to our participants because it's always so helpful to have that human connection there in a webinar because lots of times with Zoom calls, you sort of feel like you're speaking, speaking out into a great big void. So this time it was a, a lovely connection going on. Thank you for your ideas. I have a whole list here of ideas. Yeah, we wrote all the whole, everything down. <laughs> Yeah, because that's what we need. We need help. We need feedback. Um, Bonnie and I are on the caucus with other people, but it's it's pretty much been Bonnie and I doing most of the work, to be honest. Um, so that part has been a little bit challenging, but uh, we're going to keep working away. So yeah, we'll just do what we can do. That's right. Um, sorry, right. Um, I didn't see the emails come into the chat. Did Is it just myself that's not seeing them? Oh, I think because. Um, oh, sorry, I, I did they, it to you, Fiona. Yes. Maybe we'll just, just before we sign off, we'll put them in the general chat because the chat also gets recorded as well, too. So people will be able to see that. Okay. Um, Thanks. Yeah, I don't know how to change it. Okay, hang on then. I will, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, Important to have our contact information out there, that's for sure. Okay, you should be able to see Bonnie's and then I'll just put in Mark's here. All right, so people should be able to see them now, hopefully. Maybe you can just give a thumbs up <laughs> if you can. Right now. Great, okay. All right, so well, thank you everybody for attending um, in person and for those who are going to be um, catching this on our YouTube channel, the Canadian Association of Nurses for the Environment, as you uh, hopefully know um, that we do have a YouTube channel. So uh, we'll, we will put the recording of this uh, webinar up uh, and uh, do feel free then to contact Bonnie and Mark uh, or, um, or Kane if you have any other questions or, uh, or um, would like to contribute in any way. So thank you to everybody and um, all the best wishes. Thank you. Be safe, right. everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye.